By the end of this video, you're gonna understand one of the most important defensive principles in pickleball. Danny's over there getting the second camera ready, but actually, Danny, you're up high. Put your, your paddle up high. If their paddle, your opponent's paddle is up high on the other side of the net, get your paddle down low. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's go. So when I learned this, it changed everything for me. So Danny, your paddle's up. If I ever see my opponent's paddle up, meaning it's up because I hit them some type of ball that's high, I immediately should get into a paddle down scenario. My friend Shay Underwood calls this a seesaw effect because just conversely, if my paddle goes up, then Danny would want to get his paddle down. So why is this important? Well, there's gonna be a lot of times where you're on a pickleball court, you're playing doubles, and the ball gets popped up, whether your partner pops it up or you pop it up. And when that happens, you wanna be in a position, you don't wanna give up on the point because it's not over. Please do not give up on the point. You wanna be in a position with your paddle that you can recover the ball. So let's talk about the first two technique pieces of this. Number one, paddle down. Okay, so here it is. In the way I hold this on paddle down, I like to hold two hands. The first person I ever saw do this when I first started playing was Vivian David. So what I'm doing right now I'm actually taking my, my second hand and I'm actually gonna put it on there and I like to have one finger at the top okay so this is the way it looks so this is how my other side looks and then I go down. And the trigger for this is anytime, like I said, the ball goes up, I'm kind of sitting here and my paddle goes down. I don't need to have my paddle up here, especially when I'm in the mid court area on defense. Because if, <laughs> zoom tight. And action. Because if my paddle's up here and they hit a ball up here, I'm more likely to hit it. So the farther I get back in this area, I'm on the defensive, I want my paddle down if the ball's going up because that's most likely where the ball is going. If it goes up here, let it go. So number one is paddle down. Quick interruption, zoom in, Zoop. a little bit out. Zoop. I got a video series, a new video series for you. 18 advanced tips to help you move up a level. Go to the description below, click the link, type in your email and start getting videos immediately. One video a day for 18 days. Let's go. Now back to the video. Zoop. Number two is I want to lift the ball up like a volleyball player who's digging a spike from the other team. So we want to lift in order to have a higher trajectory, which gives us a better chance to do what the third one is, miss high. You hit the ball into the net, points over, can't win. You miss high, you give yourself another chance to play another point. Then the fourth one of this is after you've put your paddle down, you've lifted the ball, you've ensured you missed high. When you hit a good one, you want to move back to the kitchen. So I'm going to back up here. So all of a sudden, say I, I was, my partner said I hit a third shot drop. I hit my ball, I lift it up. I have to hit another one because it wasn't perfect. I have to hit another one because it wasn't perfect. I hit another one and it's good enough, meaning good enough is it's either going to bounce and they're going to hit up or they're going to hit up out of the air. That's when I'm going to move forward on balance and work to get back to the kitchen line. So what are some of the scenarios that this might happen? Well, so let's say I hit a third shot drop that Danny's gonna hit down on. The moment I see that my drop is a little bit high, that the trajectory is still rising as it crosses through the net, I wanna get my paddle down, stop where I'm at, get on balance, and look to lift the ball back over the net. So I go to hit my third shot drop, and I hit it a little high. Well, I don't love that yet. Now I love it, and I'm gonna move in, and I'm gonna play. Maybe your partner is the one that misses the third. You gotta stop where you're at and you gotta look to dig this like a volleyball player in order to work your way back up to the kitchen. I love, I love that course. course. Ah! One other thing you'll notice is that when that ball goes up, I'm not waiting to get my paddle down until Danny hits it. The moment that the ball goes up, I just go here because I wanna eliminate the need and the time it takes to move my paddle here. Ball goes up, I'm here. So one other thing to consider is when I'm back farther at the baseline, I don't need to be standing up here with my paddle really high. I actually might have the paddle a little bit lower for anticipating that my partner might miss or I might miss and I need to get down. The closer I get up to the kitchen line though, the more my paddle will rise up. Getting higher, getting higher, getting higher, getting higher. If my paddle's way up here, I'm exaggerating a little bit, and Danny hits a ball that's potentially going out, I'm actually gonna, still gonna hit that ball and maybe I should have let it go, right? So I actually, I prefer your preference, how high you like to have it. I like to have it about right in this area right here. So if Danny does, you know, as I'm coming closer, if Danny does hit an attacking ball, right? So I've, I've kept my paddle low. And I, he still tries to attack, right? I can counter that ball well. I don't want to keep it low around this area because if Danny goes to attack, then I have to bring it all the way up here, which is more movement. And when the game is, when we're only 14 feet from each other, the game's happening fast, he speeds it up. Right? I want to be able to counter that ball well. Here's the second scenario, right? You might be dinking before you were dinking, right? And let's say your partner ends up popping a ball up. The moment I pop this ball up, do not just stand here and take it. 
Okay, that ball's high. If I stand here and take it, even if I get my paddle down, I might do something, but don't, don't stand here and take it. Instead, take a step off and get your paddle down. Remember, as you step back into the court, typically my paddle is gonna start to lower because again, we don't want it up here because the balls are flying out. Boom. Boom. Pack in, out. Oh, ah. That was a perfect example. I stepped back, I popped it, I popped it, I popped it. As I came back closer, I got ready to counter. And that's what you can do. I hate when I watch players just give up on a point. They'll be standing here, their partner pops it up, they just give up. You don't have to give up. You can defend and get these balls back. Paddle goes up, paddle goes down. Yes. Are you listening? <laughs> so what does happen if the ball comes up to your waist and it's not going out? Occasionally I still will rise up with two hands, but occasionally I'll just let go and I will hit more of a tennis volley. When I'm doing this, I'm not death gripping the paddle, right? I have loose hands, I have a loose grip, okay? So ball's here. And so the more you do this, the more balls that you keep alive, the more balls that you keep alive, the more frustrated your opponents get. And the more frustrated your opponents get, oftentimes leads to them doing a little bit too much, which would be them trying to put a ball away and they end up hitting it into the net. So, right, I hit it here, I dig a ball. <sighs> exactly. They get frustrated. There's a psychology to making one more ball. This is the technique that gets to the psychology that affects your opponent. It's somewhat advanced tip, but you can do this immediately. In fact, you should do it. If Danny is about to hit the ball, I need to be stopped. I need to be on balance. I need to be ready to defend, right? The mistake that I often see, ball comes to me. You miss a drop high, you run through it, okay? And you end up popping it up. And that would be a mistake that you see like on a third shot drop that goes high. Do not run through it. When your opponent's about to make contact, stop. Quick interruption to tell you that this video is sponsored by Selkirk. From the way they run their business to the quality of their paddles, these are my favorite paddles to use. If you want to get a Selkirk paddle, go to selkirk.com or go to selkirklabs.com. Find the paddle you like and I got you. Use my code, insert it in at checkout and you will get a digital gift card towards a future purchase. Back to the video. Now, here's another mistake on the dink, right? If let's say your opponent pops a dink up or you get caught in the defensive and you're backing up, okay? Do not keep running as you try to make contact with the ball, okay? So all of a sudden we get caught somehow, ball gets popped, I'm on the defensive, I'm moving back, okay? It's gonna be really hard to control where your ball goes and to keep it down so they can't keep attacking. Now, anytime your opponent's about to make contact with the ball, stop where you're at, get balanced, get ready to battle. Here we go, so I'm here. Oh. So how do you work on it? I'm gonna give you two different drills and then a quick game inside of those drills. And in fact, I actually, Danny does too, we do both of these things as we prepare for a, a match. So we're at a tournament, we have like a five, 10 minute warm up right before the match. We do a quick version of what I'm gonna show you right here. So the first one is I'm just sitting in the midcourt and I'm just, I'm gonna pop a ball up to Danny. The feed is important, right? I wanna give him a feed where he's hitting down on the ball. If I give him just a feed like that, then, then I'm just, I'm not really working on my hands. I'm just hitting drops from the midcourt. It's not wrong, just not what I wanna be working on. Danny gets to work on the same time on his flicks. Loose grip, good. I might just set a timer and do it for 10 minutes. It's one of my favorite drills. Here's a game you can play. In fact, Michael Lloyd, our friend, actually showed me this the other day. I don't know where he got it from, so if someone has source credit for this game, I will put it in the description. Here's the game. And remember, this person over here, who's your partner, they are working on rolling the ball, applying pressure, all right, which would happen on like a fourth shot in a game, but that's for another video. So continue to work on your rolls. Here's the game. It's first to 50, okay? The feed is important. So I have the ball here. I'm gonna feed you not a lob, okay? Cause that's gonna end the point immediately. I'm not gonna feed you a ball that's gonna bounce, okay? I'm gonna feed you a ball that you can take out of the air like this, okay? Boom. And then we're live and it's gonna be first to get 50. Now I'm gonna go as many in a row as I can until you've got me to miss. Then I'm gonna come up to the kitchen, you're gonna move back and then you're gonna feed to me and you're gonna try to go as many in a row as you can before you miss. We keep track of our score, first one to 50. So here's what it looks like, okay? So it's zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12. <laughs> right? Good, so I had 12 in a row, and now Danny's going. He's gonna feed it to me. Oh. Nice, I missed. So you keep going, so say you're at six, right? It's 12 to six, here we go, feed. Good. And then he, what are you at, Danny? What, how many do you have? Oh, you don't know? You're back to 15. zero. You're, you're back to zero. <laughs> you don't know your score. So remember, if they have their paddle up, you get your paddle down. If you want to learn how to hit a third shot drop more effectively, click this video right here.